Did you guys hear Clinton's going outside? Yeah, he's finally going outside. He's finally meeting his online friend of 13 years in real life for the very first time. Yay, good job, Clayton. They're going to California and Adelie is thrilled to finally get the F out of his apartment, okay? She's like, goodbye, piggies, goodbye, chihuahuas, goodbye, closet mom, see you again, never. In the car on their way to the airport, Adelie wants to practice pronouncing his friend's name, Cameron. She's like having a really hard time with it. Cameron, Cameron, Cameron. And she's like, oh my God, what if I call him Camarón, which means shrimp in Spanish. And he goes, oh, well, he might be thinking that you're referring to his sausage. <laughs> really? Why? Why? Annalie's like, the fuck? So they finally land at the California airport and as soon as Clayton spots Cameron, it is, woo! he starts running in slow-mo. He's like, oh, Cameron. welcome. Clayton goes running towards him and gives him a hug. I don't even think he did that with Anna Lee. She's, she's asking me, was like, are you more happy to see him or me for the first time? I'm like, mm. <laughs> the boys are having fun catching up and Anna Lee finally says something from the backseat and Clayton goes, oh my God, I totally forgot you were here. <laughs> I'm so bored. Oh, I forgot that. she was back there. <laughs> she got that. <laughs> I forgot oh, we had Annalie with us, sorry. Ignorada. <laughs> Cameron drops him off at the Airbnb that Clayton selected and wow, I was impressed by his taste. It's a super big, spacious, gorgeous home with a gorgeous kitchen, a big backyard. I mean, the decor is on point. Wow. If I were Annalie, I don't think I would go back to his apartment. I'd be like, no, no, thank you. I'll stay here with uh, whichever guy owns his house. <laughs> Later that night, they go out to a bar. They meet up with Cam and his girlfriend, V, and Clayton asks Cam to be his best man at his wedding, and he accepts. And his girlfriend goes, Wow, Cameron, you can finally wear that suit you've been waiting to wear for 12 years. <laughs> So I'm gonna assume that Cameron doesn't go out much either, which I can relate to because sometimes I find really, really cute outfits that I wanna buy, but I have nowhere to wear them to. So my goal for 2024 is to start socializing more so I can go out and socialize and not be an awkward fuck like Clayton. The waitress comes over to get their drink orders and Clayton goes, well, I'm gonna get a cocktail, but a virgin please, because I don't drink alcohol. And basically I'm a virgin in real life because Annalie, my fiance, won't have schmecks with me. What the f Wow. If I were Annalie, I would wanna punch him in his stupid face. She throws daggers at him with her eyes and Cam's like, oh, I know that look. She wants you to shut up, Cam. Or Clayton, whatever. And Clayton, this pasty ass Pillsbury doughboy says, uh, what is she gonna do? Like not have sex with me? <laughs> Annalie is sitting there, humiliated, embarrassed, teary eyed. She's crying that their entire conversation is about the lack of their sex life. Cameron's girlfriend then asks, well, did you guys talk about it? Like, why won't she have Shrek's with you? And Annalise says it's because they live in a tiny ass apartment with his mom and she's right next door and she can hear everything. And that makes her very uncomfortable. Then Cam goes, oh yeah, I get that. And Pillsbury Doughboy says, well, that's scientifically false because I took her away on a romantic getaway and she still didn't want to do it. And there was no mom. Mom was nowhere in sight. Where was mom? She was not here. Nope, nope, nope effectively living as a virgin because we haven't ha been having sex recently. So. I just figured I would share that with you. Let me get that started for you guys. Thank you. I know what those eyes mean, man. Shut up, shut What's up. What's she gonna do, not, not have that. sex with me? <laughs> uh, okay, um, I guess he woke up and chose violence. First of all, doughboy, nothing about that weekend in particular was romantic. Okay, you booked a hotel room, congratulations and then you lit a bunch of LED candles that you bought from the dollar store. Whoopee! 
<laughs> that doesn't necessarily make a woman's coochie tingle, okay? Since Cameron has some common sense, he notices Anna Lee might be a little uncomfortable about the entire conversation being about her schmeck's life. And she confirms it does. And she doesn't understand why Clayton is trying to act all macho when in reality at home he acts like a little pussy. Kitty cat, I mean. Purr, bitch. Purr. She's pretty turned off by the sight of him and she tells him she wants to go home. So Cameron looks at him and he's like, uh, yeah, you're in trouble, dude. So hopefully you'll still have a wedding. <laughs> wow, Clayton wasn't lying when he said he was awkward. I don't know if that was like genuinely him or him trying to act cool or if he thought he was being funny and like what a man acts like when he's outside talking with his friends. Like I'm tired of hearing about Clayton complain about how he can't have schmecks. I'm done. Stop talking about it. The more you talk about it, especially with her, is going to only drive her further away. I get that people want to talk about their schmecks problems or their relationship problems and confide in a good friend. I get that. That's cool. But maybe don't do it in front of your partner and maybe don't do it in front of your uh, friend's partner either. Okay, don't do it in a group setting. Stupid. Moving on to Sophie and Rob. Wow, another dude that pissed me off. Oh, I know I'm already going to get the comments. Oh my God, you always shit on men. I shit on shitty men, okay? If you have a problem with that, then maybe you're one of them. It's morning and negative Nancy is in another pissy mood because apparently Sophie asked him if he could buy a duvet for the bed and he perceived that as Sophie being negative. <laughs> and she's like, how is that being negative? I just asked for a duvet. And he goes, damn, you always need something. Nothing's ever good for you. Rob. What is wrong with you? Sophie reminds him, you're not the only one who lives here anymore. I live here too. And he goes, okay, then get yourself a duvet. And she goes, I will. It's like $30. Don't talk to me about it anymore. Just go get it. I'm not asking for much, Rob. I just wanted a duvet. Wow, there's so much to unpack here. First of all, the fact that he got mad at her for, uh, quote, being negative when all she said was talk about how she wanted a duvet because she was probably fucking cold. Instead of talking about it with her, he just got really passive aggressive and mad. Um, he admits that he didn't know what a duvet was, so maybe he got mad because he didn't know what it was and he thought it was just something fancy and expensive because he always calls her bougie and he was just mad. He was just mad to get mad. He says in his interview that he was mad because as soon as he woke up, he just heard her complain. The reason the duvet bothers the out of me is I didn't know what a duvet was when she woke me up in the morning to ask me for a duvet. It's because the first thing I heard in, in the morning was, buy me something. What the hell is wrong with him? Oh my God, what a fucking loser. Why is he so miserable, Rob? Why are you so miserable? Why do you constantly keep that chip on your shoulder? That's his entire personality. Like he, he can't be who he is without being miserable. Sophie's like, two people in a big dog should not live in a tiny studio apartment with barely a kitchen and no bathroom. And he goes, oh, here we go again with you and your bougie ass whose family helps her out. And Sophie goes, I don't ask my family for help because if I did, we wouldn't be living here. And his response is, well, you're being hella bougie for someone who doesn't have shit. <laughs> Wow, wow, he's such a loser. A big, fat loser. Oh my God, he is totally the guy that TLC, not the learning channel, I'm talking about the singing group, TLC wrote no scrubs about. Uh, Rob is a scrub. He's a guy on the passenger side of his best friend's ride trying to holler at her. Oh my God, Rob is the scrub. So they're arguing back and forth about that stupid duvet and she steps outside to get away from all his negativity. And he follows her outside to continue the argument. He's like, how about you give me like an hour before you start complaining, okay? Let me hear the birds chirping first. She goes, just go to work, okay? I don't wanna talk to you. And she starts texting her friend to vent as she should. Oh my God, I don't know how she deals with this every single day. The girl needs to pack her bags and get the hell out. I feel like Rob's biggest issue is that he doesn't know how to handle his insecurities. And instead of, um, I don't know, talking about it, maybe figuring out ways to uh, make his life better, he just gets mad. He just huffs and puffs and takes it out on his girlfriend. Later that night, Rob and Sophie go to a brewery 
And wow, they're actually smiling and laughing for once. Mm, I don't know how that happened, but uh, that doesn't last long. She's enjoying this moment and she goes, Rob, I think we should have more date nights often. And he goes, what do you mean? How much more often? What are we talking about? You want more money? You want more things? You want me to buy more things? And she's like, once every two weeks. And he's like, once every two weeks? You want every other week? And she goes, that's twice a month. And he goes, oh, okay, I think I can do that. Jeez Louise, this guy needs a chill pill. So they're talking about how fast 90 days is going and they need to get married or else she's going to get deported. And he says, I just need you to try and be positive. What? Did he just say that? To her? Did I mean, I think he meant to say that in front of a mirror. He did not just tell her to be positive. He says, roll with the good spirit? Roll with the good spirit. Roll with the good spirit? Roll with the good spirit. There's no good spirit to roll with. You emit no good spirit. You provide no positivity. What the heck are you talking about? Woo, I just needed a sip of water because I was getting dizzy. Your girl was seeing stars, okay? I am getting a headache from Rob and Sophie. So later, I don't know, the morning after, let's just say they're at a spicy store, okay, to spice up their schmeck's life because I can only imagine how uh, wonderful Rob is in bed. So they find some toys to try and the store employee, aka a producer plant, is completely inappropriate and tells him, wow, you guys are so hot. Um, if you guys are down to try something new, mm -mm 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 -mm, wink, wink. And they're both like, uh, what would you say? I don't know, Rob, what would you say? I don't know, you go first, what would you say? I don't know, Rob, you answer first. By the way, if an actual store employee said that, I'm pretty sure she could get fired for uh, sexual harassment. But anyway, this leads to another argument. Sophie's like, you answer first. And he goes, oh my God, you just want me to expose myself. So what does that mean? You you would say yes, you would have sex with another woman? Oh my God, only if you said yes. So you, you're gonna... <laughs> That's what I heard. So basically, Sophie's mad at him because she wanted him to say, no, I'm happily engaged, so no thank you. But instead, he said yes, because uh, he would have said yes. And now she wants an apology from him, but he doesn't want to give her one, so they argue again in the spicy store about the non-apology. I just need to apologize to me and be nice to say I don't want to keep I need to apologize to you? I'm sorry, Sophie. For doing what? For sounding like I was open to... To someone else but me. I'm not saying that that. I'm not saying that I gotta say, I'm usually on Sophie's side, but this argument was so stupid. Well, in a future episode, hopefully the next one, her mom is in California, her mummy, and she is going to rip him a new one. I can't wait. I can't wait. Because Sophie's so soft-spoken, even when she's yelling, she's like so polite. And so we need mom to the rescue. Okay, really quick, let's talk about Devin and Nick because they get married. That was so freaking fast. Oh my God. Um, She did put on her Instagram the other night that this might be the last episode she's on this season. And yeah, I guess it makes sense because she got married and I guess they don't have any other drama, any other problems. In this episode, the family and him were getting along perfectly fine. I guess the piggy comment was solved and over with. <laughs> All I have to say about the wedding is I thought it was stunning. She looked gorgeous in her dress. I loved her makeup. He looked great. Um, the family looked happy. They looked happy. The wedding venue and their arch was so beautifully decorated. I, lo I loved like the cherry blossom trees. Were those cherry blossoms? I don't know, but it was gorgeous. And after they said their vows, they went outside and there was a helicopter waiting because Devin's parents gifted them a sunset romantic helicopter ride. Next is Ashley and Manuel. Ashley goes to try on her wedding dress with her mom and her sister. And she says, according to her, she's going for a mermaid look that is coming out of the water, wrapped in glistening luxe crystals. And then she walks out in her dress and it's completely not that. <laughs> Here's the wedding dress vibe. Mermaid, glistening, coming out of the water, crystals, luxe, princess, goddess, mermaid. Oh my God, what is that? Oh my God, what is that? I didn't get any of that mermaid luxe vibe.
just was completely not the look that she described. But however, once she put on her quartz crystal crown, I, I guess that did give me a little bit of that mermaid vibe. So Ashley's mom is worried that Manuel tends to run away and not talk about why he's upset when he's upset. And Ashley tries to reassure her that he's just homesick, okay? He's just trying to get used to Rochester. And her sister doesn't buy that. She's like, I don't think that's a legit excuse. And mom tells Ashley, well, I want to talk to him and give him a piece of my mind, okay? And figure it out for myself. Ashley goes home and she tells Manuel, my mom wants to talk to you. And he's surprisingly cool about it. He's like, okay. So they meet up, him and her mom, and they have a conversation which doesn't really go super well, but it doesn't go bad either. He's just, I don't know, he just seems so nonchalant. And Ashley's mom realizes that her daughter is an adult, so she's she can't change her mind. She's not going to force her not to get married. Uh, she's going to respect her decision and support her decision and be there for her. But she doesn't trust Manuel. But she doesn't not like him either. She likes him, but she doesn't trust him. Now let's talk about Sam and Citra. Mm, I have a lot of thoughts. Um, So Sam is driving Citra to his house and she's looking outside at the scenery and she notices that a lot of the houses there look like the ones in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> they finally arrive at his house and I guess there's a way for him to go directly into his room first before entering like the main part of the house. And she takes off her shoes before she enters his room. And I'm just like, girl, you don't have to do that. Okay, you don't. I just have a feeling that they're a shoes on type of family. She's finally in his room. She looks around and it's a hot dumpster mess. I can't believe that this is his version of a clean room. Like, didn't we see him clean up a couple days ago or the last episode he was sweeping, he was brooming, he was like wiping shit. What were you doing? Like, I just want to clean up. All right, baby, so let me just show you around before you shower. He gives her a tour of the rest of the house. She meets his dad. He's pretty nice, gives her a hug, and Sam says, I brought a pretty one. Okay. Dad is very impressed by her. He thinks she's gorgeous and says he hopes she'll help him cook. <laughs> Sam continues the tour. This is my dad's room. This is my brother's room. This is where I'll be sleeping. They have to sleep in separate rooms because it's against her religion to be sleeping together before they're married. But tell me why he's sleeping in the bedroom that's clean and he puts her in his disgusting ass room. Then he shows her the bathroom and shows her that he got a bidet. And I learned in a previous season that in the Muslim faith, they use bidets for cleanliness or as Sam would say, they gotta get up all in there and wash it up. She has to have the booty wash. I cannot believe Sam has the audacity to go into his bedroom and look her in the eye and say, This isn't as bad as you thought, right? Not all messy is bad as you thought. Are you freaking kidding me? How the heck is she supposed to feel comfortable in all of that filth? This is a disaster. I can't believe how calm and polite she was. I would have flipped my shit. I would have been like, what the fuck is this? I understand if things are a little bit messy and unorganized, but there's so much dirt and there's like crumbs everywhere and there's dust. Ooh. I just don't understand how you don't have the decency to clean and prepare a room that your fiance is going to come and stay in. Oh, so anyway, Citra starts unpacking. And she pulls out an outfit that she got for Sam to wear when he prays in the mosque. And she says, we need to go find a mosque. And the dad um, doesn't look super enthusiastic. Remember, he's an alienist. It's super late. Everybody's tired. And she crawls into his bed. And I couldn't help but to wonder if he had washed his sheets or his covers or pillowcase or anything. Um, I'm going to say no. Absolutely not. There was no way in hell. I don't even know when the last time he washed it. I felt so bad that she had to sleep there. I would have refused. I would have wanted to get a hotel or I would have demanded the cleaner room. The morning after, Citra's making some breakfast and Sam is horny. He can't keep his hands off of her. He's like massaging her shoulders, brushing her arm, holding her hands, hugging her all over. Citra looks at him and says, can we go clean your car after breakfast? Because it's gross. No, she didn't really say that. She was much nicer about it. And once we get a look inside his car, it was another tragedy. How 
Does he live like this? Oh my god. I understand he lives in his car. He works from job to job. I understand it can get messy and dirty, of course. But clean it up once in a while. There's so much trash and filth inside. It honestly looked like a hoarder's car. She's like, can you please, please clean your car before my dad gets here and my sister gets here? Because once they get in your car and sees it like that, they're not going to like you. How is he not fucking embarrassed? Listen, I get that some people have a hard time cleaning. If you do, hire someone. Get help. Maybe have your brother. He knows how to clean his room, clearly. Have your brother help you. And it also pissed me off that she had to help him clean. She shouldn't have to do that. She shouldn't even be there. He should be the one cleaning up his mess. Ugh. So she's cleaning up his car, comes across his diversion paperwork, and he casually goes, oh, by the way, I'm not going to get the diversion because um, I didn't submit the paperwork on time. So the judge offered this diversion program so that he didn't have to go to jail. And he didn't apply in time he missed the deadline are you freaking kidding me how are you this inept how are you surviving so he tells her yeah i might go to jail right after our wedding citra's like okay so you lied to me and my dad he's gonna be so mad and he goes do you love me enough to stick by me no matter what or are you just gonna listen to your dad and leave me uh personally i hope it's the latter okay i hope citra packs her bags And goes home, girl. This is not worth it. Oh my God, this is your future you're looking at. You really want this? Last but not least, we have Jasmine and Gino. It's going to be very short. Not much happened. So Jasmine and Gino are at the beach in Florida and her boobs. Oh God, they look so painful. Ouch. Every time I looked at her boobs, I was just like, oh, oh, mine hurt. Everything is just super tight. Super, super, super tight. Her ass is huge thanks to her new booty implants, and he's massaging sunscreen on them as she's bent over. Can you imagine being at the beach and you turn around and you just see them do this? Jasmine loves Miami. She loves the beach. She loves the sand. She loves the hot weather. She tells him, you know, I really wish we could have our wedding here. And he's like, well, Jasmine, if I have my wedding here, then my family can't come. They're all in Michigan. We need to have our wedding in Michigan. And Jasmine goes, you know what? Your family makes me feel very uncomfortable. So I don't want them at our wedding. (sighs) Come on. That is so unrealistic to not invite his family to his wedding in the state they live in. She's like, none of your family supports our relationship. And I just don't want them there. And he's like, no, Jasmine, I need to have my family there. And she goes, okay, fine. I'll give them one more chance. And if they mess it up, I'm done. Okay, what the hell was the point of that? Does she really think it's reasonable to not invite his family? Like, come on. What is this? This is stupid. Just hurry up and tell him that you borrowed money for your ass implants from Done. Wow, I gotta say, this episode was pretty entertaining and infuriating and shocking all at the same time. I would give it uh, an 8 out of 10 for my enjoyment. Well, that's pretty much it for the recap. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments, and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye!